So recording started. Okay. So today's session, the first topic it will be. Okay, let me share my screen. Then I'm telling. The session will be start from this three topic. Okay, keyhole, CV, clustering, and I play pass. Okay. So first, like keyhole CV. Okay, if I go to K4 CV, we will directly jump to code. Okay, because there is no theory for K4 cross validation. CV means cross validation. Means if you have a small amount of data, okay, it can be correct. Like you, you will have like a small amount of data, maybe thousand, ten thousand, small data. Okay, so that point of time, when you train your model, okay. The uh, you no know, maximum time your training model okay will give you the accurate score. Okay. Accurate score means hundred percent. Means you guys remember last day or last time we discussed correct right? like about overfit a model. Okay. So there is terms like underfit, overfit, and balance fit. So if your model data is less or your training data is less, that point of time, tendency to fit your model is high, like overfit. Okay. So that's where we are going to use k fold plot validation. K k is a hyperparameter. Okay. It can be like four. Three, five, two, one, any number. Okay. Fold means you know, like you are doing a paper folding. So how many times you are folding your data? So that is k fold cross validation. Okay. So let's directly jump to code. See, this is very simple. Okay, like whatever the required library is required that we import it. Okay. And we already know, like in scikit-learn, there are some predefined okay data is there. Okay, so we are loading that load digits, like there's handwritten digits that we already saw. So that data we are loading. Now, if we are splitting, we already know in our last session also, like how to you know split and train. So like that way, if we are doing and your test size is 0 0.3 percent that's mean 70 percent is train data 30 percent is test data correct we split it up and if you are using a log logistic regression so your score is 94 percent in a very short time now the same way if you are doing svm svm also we show it's like 42 percent the score is very less. Now, if we can implement a random forest, now it's 92% almost. Correct? But every time, based on your data, like your training data, base data, we're going to change, your percentage is also going to change. So, what's the way to validate your data? Correct? You are doing training and test. Now we need to know how to validate those data. So how we can do that? Very simple. In scikit-learn only, we have a K fold that we will take from model selection. Okay. And same way we are defining our object at the time of defining object, we are saying n split three means three times fold those data. Means randomly take those data three times. Example. If this is my data, 1 to 9, see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, okay, if I'm splitting through for loop, so see, first time, it took like this way, correct? Second time, it took the data like this way. Third time, it took the data like this way. So every time, it's changing those training data and test data. So that's mean after changing so many times if your model score it's almost average every time that point of time you can say yes 
whatever the model you created that is not overfit that is balanced fit because your training data you are changing multiple times correct so that's when you are validating your model so how we can do that very simple again see we have we just created three array logistic sbm and rbf okay and every time we just pass see single line this is like a i am testing with individual way okay but i am going to split my data three so my escape fold means three i am folding three okay now if i check first time it scored 89 second time it scored 94 third time it scored 90 for sbm 39 41 45 for random forest 92 95 92 correct so that's been you can easily say here one time it's like 89 percent otherwise 94 90. in random forest every time it's above 90 like 93 almost 95 and 93 so that's when you can say if you are building this model using random forest so this is your best choice correct Now, so this cross validation score also, this cross validation score also, you no need to do manual. Last time we saw, we given n split three, and we check individually like this way, correct? So there are another function is called cross validation score. Okay, so you just pass directly like this one, a single line. Okay, you no need to define n split or something like that. Directly give that. So this option also they are given. When you are giving same output, you will going to get. Correct. So this is another criteria or technique. Another thing, every time is giving like you know three because you given C B equal to three cross validation. So if you are giving in, if you are doing NP average, NP means NumPy. So obviously you are guessing, correct? Like you are calculating by your mind, like what is the average? So you can average like this way also, then you will get, correct? So this is the thing. See over here, we are doing 10 times, correct? 10 times we are doing and we got, see, every time with this random forest classifier, see, first time my estimator is 5, then 20, then 30, then 40, and my CV is 10. This estimator, N estimator is basically random forest hyperparameter that I am changing, and my CV is that cross validation that I am changing. So that's been your hyperparameter is basically for your model, that is N estimator. And for K4 cross validation, that you are changed from 3 to 10, means 10 times it will change its data randomly. It will sample those data randomly. Okay. So, this is K4 cross validation. It's very useful when we have a small amount of data and it's like tendency is there to easily, you know, overfit your model. Then we will use this CV cross validation. Clear? Very simple, this one. Correct? Okay. Let's jump to K means cluster. So, see, like, here some data are there. Okay. Before K means cluster and lab based classifier, you guys should know up to last day, whatever the topics we learn means these things. Okay, what about those things are here written? All those things we call supervised machine learning. Correct? Right? Because you have some data in those data, it's already written. Correct? Right? Like what will be your output? And you are training your model in that way. This K means clustering and naive bias. Okay, so these two topics is basically unsupervised clustering. Okay, where is it useful? Suppose you have a you know customer base. Okay. Now you want to segregate based on their purchase value. 
in a different different cluster okay or you guys remember correct like uh, in this pandemic only government actually created some cluster based on the tendency of increment of covid 19 correct so this clustering how machine learning can handle just see just think like this is x and y coordinate some red dots are there and some you know green dots are there okay fine now if you don't know first like just think this is your starting point you don't know what are those red what are those green you haven't you know segregated correct so you have all are black okay now this is called k means clustering now k is again a hyperparameter for this algorithm okay so first i am defining k equal to 2 okay and just think this k is centroids means you have to place that k okay somewhere randomly so it should be in middle so i don't know what is that middle i am started from here okay so now my k is 2 so that's why i place one red one green okay i just put it over there so in the first loop it will check okay how it will check it will split it will directly split from the middle now whatever the coming in left side that is red whatever the coming is right side that is green simple see simple now it will try it will try to calculate the distance okay so how it will calculate the distance from this split you remember like this sbm sbc we actually you know calculate the distance the same way it will calculate from that slice to individual points okay it will try to calculate now based on the calculation in third step or third iteration it will adjust his position so that that centroid means this star can know if i am placing myself over there then i can get a minimum distance from my surrounding points okay so it will adjust now see again the recluster every point based on their distance with centroid means again it shifted little bit so see previously one two three four three sorry four red and others are green now once it's little bit of shifted and that you know slicing part also shifted now it's good like one two three four five six seven seven okay in the red side again adjust okay see it's moving and now one two three four five six seven okay one green is there otherwise everything is separated then recompute the cluster repeat is still data point stop changing clusters okay so that's been this one also under rate again it's calculating the distance and finally it will give you two cluster two separate cluster like this way okay but how to determine correct number of cluster correct that we never define because that's a hyper parameter it, now now just think if you are checking randomly like two three four five six seven so maybe after a certain point whatever the cluster number you are going to change but you are you know output will be same so then what will happen so like see for this one correct because what we are trying to do we are basically we know correct we already saw like those distance means basically sum of square errors we are gathering those errors or loss okay and through gradient descent we are trying to minimize those errors we saw correct that's partial derivative or derivative so we are just trying to minimize the distance so that error can be less correct so formula is same that we already saw in any other algorithm the same way now this is the technique we call elbow technique 
and this is where we can define this k k means clustering k value so if we start from one so your loss is very high and you are minimizing that loss correct and you are changing the k value from one to two two to three three to four then five then six seven eight nine ten correct now but problem is just think after four you can give up to 11 that's perfectly okay okay you can minimize the error or loss but after four the actual fall okay or the changes is very less correct now if you if you can train your model up to 11 obviously your you know sum of square error will be less so the base value to start is what four correct so this is called a knee point like in our hand knee so that knee point okay so we can start from k equal to four or you can say after k four the error rate is slow or low okay simple this is not very complex so this is k means clustering how unsupervised learning is basically going to do now, if we directly jump to practical things, simple, you don't need to do anything. You understand that algorithm. Now, rest of the things we're going to do from scikit-learn. See, cluster k means other than that, everything is perfect. Simple, I calculated a name, age, and income. Okay, so suppose this is your data. Okay. Now, if you can create a scatter plot, it will look like this scattered. Now, cluster equal to 3 means my k value, I am giving 3, okay, and I am just trying to predict, okay, now what is going to happen, if I create like this way, I have age and income, because name is not required, correct, over here, because name is not giving anything, any information, so I am just dealing with age and income, so my x is age and y is income, and if I create a cluster, so see, very easily it's create a cluster like 61, 60, it's created zero cluster. 70 to 90, it's created a second cluster. And 150,000, it's created another cluster. So we can easily say, very easily, it's created multiple cluster. Correct? Now, where you can implement this thing? See, this star you can see this is like a center center of x points okay so whatever the things below 60 okay almost 60 that is green above 60 to almost 90 or 90 90 95 it's basically like a black and above anything that is there that is like a red correct so if you have some data like you know uh, in your product, multiple customers are there and you need to segregate your customer so that you can do a better marketing things to those customers. Whoever is high paid customer, medium paid, low paid. So based on your data only, you can easily create cluster and you can, you can do like, you know, your marketing stuff. Because obviously, whoever is not purchasing your product, Beyond 60,000, the probability to purchase your product at the cost of 1,50,000 is very less. Correct? Because tendency is purchasing almost 60,000. So you will obviously not going to do any marketing with those person. That's their, you're not first priority. Correct? So this is the way we can create a cluster. Okay? But Another thing we can do, see previously, I just transferred 27, like these numbers directly, right? So there is no scale. So age in a different scale, income in a different scale. But if I need to, you know, implement in a same scale so that it can look like in between zero and one, everything. So it's called min max scalar. So I am this using this function i'm trying to you know fit everything within zero and one number so if i'm doing that and again retrain my model okay so then what will happen 
Now see your cluster, how beautiful it's defined. It's totally separated. So sometime for your machine learning algorithm, it's better because age having a different scale, correct? It should, it can be like one to maybe 100, but salary in a different scale, it can be from like zero to 10 lakhs, 20 lakhs, 30 lakhs. So in a different scale. So machine learning don't know, correct? So it, it will be like confused. <coughs> so sometime you have to do like means max scalar or standard scalar. So like this way you can actually, you know, uh, creating a scale, every number it will be fit within zero to one. So it will be very good for machine learning. Clear up to this. And see, this is the elbow plot. Okay. Elbow plot, what we are discussing over there. So we defined k equal to three. Why three? Because we know that elbow technique, your knee is coming at the time of three. So if it's coming four, correct? If you can see from four, it's changing. So obviously you can easily change this. Where is that? Where is that? Yeah, this end cluster, we just change from three to four. And obviously your model will perform better. Clear? So what is K-fold cross validation and K-means clustering, how we are doing? Okay, so next jump to the next topic. Nail pace is basically work on probability, correct? Right? That we all know. We already learn in our colleges and school. So we already uh, discuss about those mathematics parts. So it will be very easy for you guys. So see that P head, okay, means probability of head, that is one by two, that we know. Now, where Nate is actually helping us, if the question is pick a random card, what is the probability of getting a queen? Okay. Pick a random card, what is the probability of getting a queen? So we know there is four queens. Four by 52. Yes, so one by 13, the probability, simple. Now, the major part, pick a random card, you know it is a diamond. Now, what is the probability of that card being a queen? Then what will happen? Then it will be again- One by five. Yes. Correct. One by 13, because queen is one and diamond is having yeah, 13. Correct? So one by 13, clear. So this is the actual formula. Probability of event A, knowing that event B has already occurred. Okay? So the formula is this one. Okay? And we all know this, this man, Thomas Bass, who actually founded this name Bass. Okay? Bass theorem. Yes, bias theorem, absolutely. So, just think, we already saw like that Titanic data set, remember? So in the Titanic data sets, all those passenger name, class, sex, age, siblings, perch, ticket, fare, all those things are there. And lastly, we are saying the surviving probability, like is there survived or not survived? So formula is very simple. Survive, you have to find, so it will be top. And below, male, class, age, cabin, fair, all are your dependent variable. Correct? And you need to find out the probability. So where we can use this thing? Okay? We can use via this, again, easily found or create a model like an email spam. Okay? We can do like hand-region digit classification. We can predict our weather, like tornado is coming, you know, cyclone is coming. So this kind of thing we can do. You can do a human face recognition. You can do, a, you know, fake news classification. Okay, so this is like a applied thing where we can apply this naive based classifier. Okay, so again, naive based classifier it's a part of supervised, okay? 
but the main thing for unsupervised that is k means clustering so if you have any product okay or software and if you want to you know segregate all your customer so you can easily use k means clustering now if you want to know like their review whatever the review they actually given that is like a positive or negative or like a fake review or like an appropriate review how you can do that you can easily implement via an app-based classifier correct so this is the all thing we can do now how we can implement night base this is also very simple again if nothing is there simple thing to do go to psychic learn everything is there okay just see like if this is your data like category message and it's saying it's a spam or not spam if that is spam it's saying spam category if not is not spam so it's calling ham if you have this kind of data and you train your model correct so see here i used one extra thing that is called cow vectorizer okay that just think we need to do okay that we will going to discuss like cow vectorizer tfidf and other thing in our next session that is nlp natural language processing for the time being uh, this NLP we are going to use because this is message, correct? And message means some text that you can directly deal, okay? With those what on it coding or something else because that's a direct text. So, so that we will later learn. But here, see multinomial NB. So this is the library where we use NiveBase. Okay, just a simple line need to change, and simple way if you are passing see like this way the emails then if you can predict it's a simple very simple way you have to just change these two line and everything will be saved okay now this vectorizer this one so this is like a pipeline you can also create a pipeline like in, means uh, instead of creating two different function okay so you can you can create a pipeline in sklearn okay, again this is like a you know base practice of coding or machine learning so if you can create a pipeline and in that pipeline if you are just giving okay this array if you are passing and in that array your first object is this vectorizer second object is this knife base okay then what will happen it will you know execute by step by step in a pipeline Okay, but it will give the same thing. Okay, so very simple this one. Nothing like a complex thing over there. Cool. So we we saw how NAPES need to be implemented. This is part of NLP, natural language processing. That's why I showcased at very last because few things you need to learn in NLP time. <coughs> Gaming clustering. This is very useful when you are clustering your customers and k fold is very much useful when you have a very small chunk of data but you don't no need to you know you don't want to overfeed your model very easily then that point of time you can easily use this k fold cross validation okay so i am stopping sharing my screen stop recording